getting to snow here in Providence, but someone who's been certainly keeping an eye on the skies, keeping Rhode Island prepared for what's to come. Peter Gaynor, the director of the Rhode Island Emergency Management Agency. I appreciate your taking the time to Skype in with us. Anytime, Kate. Well, tell us about how the day has been. This is a late breaking storm. <laughs> a lot of folks wondering when it's going to start. We've seen the preparations from the state standpoint, closing state offices, schools being closed. Start with us. What's your day been like so far dealing with what's to come? So let me go back a little farther. So th this, uh, this storm has been uh, problematic from the beginning, uh, forecast wise. Uh, we like to see early on, maybe as much as uh, 36, 48 hours before the event, some confidence in what it's going to look like. Mm. Um, and it's still elusive uh, to some degree. Uh, so we are uh, activated in the state uh, EOC. We've been here since 10 o'clock. Uh, we've had a number of uh, planning meetings with the governor and staff and other departments that are here helping me uh, make decisions. Uh, right now, the storm is, uh, I think the front end is really getting into Rhode Island. It's been stalled. If you watch the news of uh, what it looks like in New York City, uh, Washington, D.C., Western Connecticut, uh, we can expect uh, those conditions here uh, probably after 7 p.m. tonight. Um, so 7 p.m. going to be the brunt of it. And you just had a national call, did you not? What's, what's the latest that you and your uh, staff have heard from national weather folks? So, uh, yes, we, we have a couple calls a day. The last one was at uh, 3 o'clock with the Weather Service. Uh, they kind of gave us the update that the, the system is, is stalled a little bit, but still moving, just a matter of time before it gets to Rhode Island. And I think if you're in Southern Rhode Island, you probably see that the snow has picked up a little bit. Uh, for us, I think the brunt of the storm, the most accumulating part of the storm, uh, will be between 7 p.m. and 2 a.m. And then once uh, early morning Thursday, uh, it will start to dwindle off. We'll see some uh, up until 9 a.m. on Thursday. So uh, we, we just delayed a little bit uh, than what we thought it would, uh, what it would do today. So it's been delayed. You've been keeping an eye. You've got trucks, uh, preparations at the ready. As the storm moves in later on this evening, Peter, when do we think that we'll hear more from the state as to what Thursday looks like? We know yesterday all the preparations were made for today. Do we have a sense when decisions are going to be made about closures, um, and status uh, as it looks like uh, moving into tomorrow. So we'll, so when it comes to road conditions, you know, uh, we actually following the weather service, we just got off the call with uh, the governor and uh, uh, Mr. LV from DOT talking about conditions and what it may look like tonight when it comes to travel. Uh, we're going to wait a little bit longer to see what the six o'clock weather is before we make any decisions. Okay. Uh, we think tomorrow, tomorrow morning, um, you know, DOT is uh, confident that they'll keep up with the snow overnight. Uh, it will be, you know, it will be wet and it, it may be slushy in some areas. Uh, but I think the fortunate thing for tomorrow, as soon as the sun comes up, uh, that is really in our favor, uh, you know, making the, the roads a little bit warmer, uh, making that snow melt away. And I think the, the temperatures for tomorrow are in the 40s. So uh, although it may be uh, uh, some minor problems in the morning, that will quickly go away. Uh, by the time afternoon uh, arrives. So you've got full confidence, again, having the crews out uh, around the state overnight. Again, nobody on the roads, uh, again, both with bands and just by lieu of the time, that they'll be able to really tackle the snowfall come tomorrow. Uh, yes. Uh, and, and I think, you know, we've made a lot of uh, decisions over the past couple of days about what we, uh, you know, what the how, how you uh, become successful. And it's really a partnership between uh, the public and the public safety. Uh, so uh, we make those decisions based on information we have in, in the moment. Um, and when the public cooperates with uh, the plow drivers and state police, uh, it makes for a better result. Uh, now this will move into the overnight. I think the result will be even better because obviously less cars on the road. So uh, we appreciate all the cooperation of the traveling public today, uh, truck drivers, all those people that are out on the roads. Uh, you know, we're almost out of this. Uh, you know, I think yesterday was spring. We're looking forward to uh, uh, no more snow and a little bit warmer weather. Do you feel, I just want to ask you finally while you're here, is it a difficult situation to be in? It's almost, you know, is it a no win when you're preparing for a storm, you want to be prepared and tell folks to stay in, and then met with a, a slow-moving storm? 
Um, you know, what would you say to folks that say, hey, well, we didn't get snow today. Is, was it just too tough to call, as you said, a, a difficult storm to forecast? It, it, this was a difficult storm. And I think, you know, the later you get into March, the, the, it becomes more of a problem trying to predict what the weather's going to look like. Uh, you know, the way we work and the, and the recommendations we, we make are based on what we know in the moment. So when we decided to close government yesterday, the forecast, we, you know, at the time was, uh, you know, we were going to have a bad commute today. Um, and, and, you know, when it's a, you know, if it's a tie or a draw, you know, we always err on the side of public safety. Mm-hmm. And as easy as you can say, uh, you know, how come you close government uh, today and there's no snow? It could have been on the other side, hey, you didn't close government and you had all this snow. So, you know, I, you know, my personal belief is uh, if it's a tie on what to do, we always err on the side of public safety. And I think if we had to do it over again tomorrow, we would have done the same thing. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to Skype in, give folks a little bit of a perspective as what's to be expected moving forward. Again, as you said, probably the brunt coming between 7 and 2 and that the state will be working through the night to make sure that for the morning as much is cleared as away as possible. Anything else you want to share with viewers while we have you here uh, in studio, Peter? So I would just say two things tonight. So if you're planning on travel, especially if you're traveling from uh, Rhode Island to Connecticut or into, into New York, you know, it looks really good out right now. And you may say, well, this is what it looks like uh, in Connecticut. Uh, but let me assure you that it, it's, it's totally different. So really plan your travel tonight, especially if you're going uh, west. Uh, and then secondly, uh, we expect power outages. So okay. National Grid uh, doesn't know that you're out of power until you call them. So the number is 1-800-465-1212. Call them, uh, get on that restoration list, and uh, you know they'll be out there as soon as conditions are safe uh, to perform restoration. And when we talk power outages, is the concern, Peter, that the snow is going to be wet and heavy as opposed to being concerned about winds, for instance? What are the conditions that we're concerned about power outages with? Yeah, so I think the, 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 for us, you know, the, the worst combination is heavy, wet snow with high wind, and I think that's what we're looking at tonight. Okay. Now, we won't get the extreme high wind that we saw a couple storms ago, uh, but the snow will be wet uh, and pasty. It will stick to things, and, and we expect power outages. National Grid is in the Mercy Operations Center with us. They'll be here uh, through the night, and uh, they're ready to respond. They have hundreds of crews in the state already. Uh, to to, uh, help uh, speed restoration uh, through the night and uh, tomorrow morning if need be. Well, Peter, I appreciate your taking the time to give folks an update here at Go Local. We'll continue to provide updates to our viewers and readers as well. But I will let you go back to the task at hand, and I'm sure we'll talk soon. Thanks, Kay. Have a good night. Thanks, Peter. Take care. Peter Gaynor, the director of the Rhode Island Emergency Management Agency, appreciate his taking the time to give an update to folks here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center We'll provide more weather updates moving forward. As he said, they are now looking at the bulk of the snow to come between 7 p.m. and 2 a.m. this morning. Going to be some uh, crews out overnight, and he says that they are looking to hopefully have things fairly clean for the morning and looking at warmer temperatures tomorrow up towards the 40s, which he said they hope will also contribute to clearing of the roads as we look to another school and work day moving forward. But stay tuned to Go Local for more updates on the weather. We'll provide those for you online, on Facebook, and uh, we'll provide everything that you need, so be sure to check in. Appreciate you tuning in this afternoon. We had live music in the Alex and Ani Lounge at 1 o'clock today. You can check that out on Facebook. We also, again, had a top tech attorney, Marcus Harris, in Chicago, giving us a perspective on Facebook's data collection, the issue with Cambridge Analytica, just how much data they're collecting and what to expect now moving forward, so appreciate his taking the time. And of course, Peter Gaynor at the Rhode Island Emergency Management Agency. We appreciate his time as well. We anticipate being back again here at the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center tomorrow at, well, we're going to be at the State House at 3 o'clock, and then 4 o'clock back in the studio here, again, weather permitting. So we appreciate your tuning in. We appreciate your watching. We appreciate your feedback, and we look forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Or Kate Nagel. Or Kate Nagel. Or Kate Nagel.